Hello, hello, it's Big Chads. We're back for another chapter. This is My Battles with Cancer, a patient and caregiver's candid memoir. I'm a cancer survivor, and I was a cancer caregiver for my mother. I published this book in 2020, republished it in 2023 after publishing Trading Wisdom and Trading Quotes. I went back and I read this book, and now that I created the audiobook, you can listen to it on Audible, um, I'm doing it on YouTube for free, the entire book. I want it to be available to everyone, and that's why I'm doing it. We finished up with the Halfway Home um, chapter last time, Halfway Home, basically halfway through chemotherapy, and now we are in the chapter Finishing Strong, or Finish Strong. Finish Strong. It was important for me to remain, remain focused on stock trading during my chemotherapy treatment. That was an amazing distraction from the morbid reality I was dealing with on a daily basis. Having something that I was passionate about and with which I could make a difference in other people's lives was absolutely invaluable to keeping my fighting spirit. The feedback I received on Twitter as I continued to put out stock charts made me feel as if I was valued. It was a welcome reminder that there was more to me than just being a sick patient who checked his temperature every 30 minutes. Quote, chemo today, I will still do my best to stay on top of the action. End quote, February 27th, 2018 at Big Chad's. My followers are pleased, and one in particular sent me some amazing feedback. Legendary. You've helped put money in my, co- my kid's college fund, man, and I will never forget it. An educator and an inspiration. I hope your family knows you are a hero to many. From my family to yours, thank you, truly, at Comma Poet. And how nice is that? Responses like this kept me going and pushed me to work hard even when I was going through chemotherapy. Knowing that I was making a difference in others' lives gave me a lot of strength and a sense of purpose. Suffering through chemotherapy and recovery had broken me down and without trading, I don't know what I would have done to keep on going. It was right about this time that an incredible career opportunity came along as I was offered a chance to appear on CNBC Africa's Crypto Trader program as a guest. In preparation for the interview, I received a phone call from the host, Mr. Rand Nooner, as I was on the way to the hospital for my fifth chemotherapy treatment. My mood was Foul, but as soon as the phone rang, things turned around and a big smile came across my face. My wife found the whole affair amusing, and for me, it was something fun to think about while I sat in the hospital that day receiving my quote unquote medicine. Later that evening, we recorded the segment, and Even though I was already suffering through some side effects from treatment, my adrenaline carried me through, and it was a great success. This opportunity was not only great for my career, but was also a huge emotional boost when I needed it the most. And for that, I will forever be grateful. After finishing my fifth chemotherapy session and leaving the hospital, I was just weeks away from my sixth and final session. After each treatment, I would tell myself that I was one-sixth done or one-third done, and now five-sixths done. Reminding myself of how close I was to the finish line helped me to keep my spirits up throughout this difficult journey. It was critically important for me to focus on the progress I had made at each junction as it was really easy to just get caught up in the misery of the moment. One day during the middle of my fifth cycle, I went out for dinner with my wife's friends at a local burger place. And as always, it was nice to get out of the house and to see her friends as they are fun to be around. In the back of my mind, I knew that I was still not back to my old self. The fact that her friends gave me special attention only reinforced my feelings of deficiency. I just wanted them to look at me 
like I was a normal person and to treat me like a regular guy and not some sick and feeble cancer patient. Even though I was almost finished with chemotherapy, that was not in the cards. And this internal conflict kept me from truly enjoying myself as I kept thinking about how far I had still to go in my recovery. As a way to try to feel more like a normal person, I did my best to enjoy the third week of each cycle when my immune system had recovered. This was when I was feeling as good as I was going to be feeling before my next chemotherapy treatment. One way I did this was to go outside and walk around, allowing me to see other people and to visit local restaurants. And as a general rule, when I had an appetite, I made sure to fill my belly as much as I could. It was a rare thing to have a good appetite and st- settled stomach. So treating myself to some of my favorite foods was a great way to boost my spirits and to replenish the nutrients in my body. Some of my favorites were the chicken pad thai, the lunch combo from the Chinese place, and cooked sushi like a spider roll. I also love to have my favorite Vietnamese dish, pho ga or chicken soup. Every sip of that soup or bite of cooked sushi, not, not raw sushi, but cooked sushi, was one small step towards feeling like my old self and getting rid of those toxic chemicals from my body. Quote, I've been eating like a king. Next week, I will have chemotherapy again and no appetite. So treating myself to lunch every day this week, March 4th, 2018 at Big Sheds. As each day passed, my energy continued to slip further and further away, eventually to the point where I had almost zero vim or vigor when I moved around. In these moments of overwhelming weakness, I wondered to myself, how would I respond if there was an emergency? If I needed to put my physical strength to the test, would I be able to handle the challenge? It's in my nature to believe that I will rise to the moment if a challenge happens, if a crisis happens. But the truth was I could barely walk to the bathroom without help. On the bright side, Despite my overwhelming lethargy, I didn't feel any pain, and the nausea was completely under control. I also didn't have any numbing in my extremities, as was to be expected based on the chemotherapy drugs that I was taking, and that for sure was a silver lining and the otherwise dark clouds hanging over my head. My body continued to break down progressively with each cycle so that by the end of the fifth cycle, I was no more than a mere shadow of my former self. All my hair was gone, including my eyebrows, and my skin reflected the fact that I had not been outside much at all in the prior months. Every time I looked in the mirror before taking a shower or brushing my teeth, I didn't recognize who or what I was looking at. During those rare moments when I could recognize my former self, I saw a wounded soldier desperately trying to keep a fire burning during a blizzard. The day before my sixth and final chemotherapy session, I noticed that once again, my mood was foul, extremely foul. There was no denying that I was short with friends and family, and I was not taking any enjoyment in otherwise fun activities like playing video games, listening to music, or even watching Judge Judy. Having lost all capacity for empathy, I was now seeing the world through a filter of negativity and resentment, merely the thought of laying in the hospital with my arm hooked up to an IV machine was more than I could stand. Over the prior months, I had developed a strong physiological aversion to anything medical related. And that made going into the hospital more difficult than it otherwise should have been. Part of this aversion was a dislike for having my blood drawn, for sitting in medical chairs, and especially 
to having an IV line put into my arm. This aversion had become so strong, in fact, that the moment I felt the saline solution entering my body, I had a gag reflex and I threw up. Furthermore, my body would tingle and I became completely uncomfortable in my own skin. When this happened, I wanted badly to go home where I could rest comfortably without further harassment from the medical staff. I was at the end of my rope emotionally and not sure how much longer I could hold on. Even with my discomfort, I was still trying to find a silver lining, but that had become increasingly difficult as I was a poor facsimile of my former positive thinking self. At times, I was afraid of even my own shadow in the sense that I was scared to touch something that would make me sick or perhaps even kill me. And that fear had eaten away at me over time. I had tried to take whatever victories were available along the way to help keep me motivated, but I was running out of gas. That fateful night before my last session of chemotherapy to prepare myself mentally, I took a nice long shower and I listened to some of my favorite classical music. While trying to relax and gather my thoughts, I kept imagining what I would have to deal with the next day, and I became completely overwhelmed with emotion. After all, I had, after all I had been through, I was left feeling violated and diminished, and as if my body was no longer my own. It was grueling to think about going through another session of enduring those chemicals, yet there was nothing I could do about it. Screaming, woo, woo, at the top of my lungs, I tried to hype myself up to get ready for my final battle with chemotherapy that following day. Screaming that way, I was attempting to muster up the same level of excitement I would as if my favorite sports team were playing in the final game of a playoff series. I was feeling so weak and pathetic that I had to find some way to fire myself up. Searching for some strength or pillar to build upon, I confidently said to myself, my body is weak, but my mind is strong. My body is weak, but my mind is strong. That desperate mantra stuck and held true, offering me a way to focus into a positive direction, all that complicated energy and emotion I was feeling. In that moment, I decided that through sheer mental power and determination, I was going to get through that last chemotherapy session with my head held high. And I chanted one more time, my body is weak, but my mind is strong. The next day, As we drove into the hospital, I was in no mood for talking, which thankfully my wife respected. Without a doubt, I was feeling foul. And even though she had reminded me earlier that this is my last session, there was a dark cloud hanging over me. Once we arrived at the hospital, we parked our car and took the elevator up to have my blood drawn before meeting with the nurse nurse practitioner. The hospital administrators had recently made a change to their security protocol so that patients could no longer open the door to the stairwell. As a result, we had to use the elevator instead. It had always been a point of pride for me to take the stairs, but given my fragile physical and emotional condition that day, I didn't mind taking the elevator. While my blood was being drawn, I made sure to let the nurse know that it was my last chemotherapy session. I was happy to share this news, and I was looking for some encouragement from her as well. After the blood test, we met with the nurse practitioner for my next appointment, and I found her manner to be disarming, and I was happy to finally meet her. After reviewing my blood tests and performing a physical examination, she told me that I was otherwise healthy, and that my treatment was going according to plan. 
We thanked the nurse practitioner for her feedback, and then we headed over for my chemotherapy session, or as they call it, infusion. The procedure is aptly named as they literally infuse your body with powerful and caustic medicines seeked out to see, designed to seek out and kill the cancer cells. After slipping into my pajamas, I prepared to pass the time by playing games on my iPad and listening to music, as always. The final chemotherapy session officially commenced as the nurse connected my IV line to the saline solution, and it started. As soon as I felt this saline solution entering my body, a gag reflex kicked in, and I threw up. I felt as if my body were being invaded. And I just could not stop. I could not wait to stop feeling that way. Once I had settled down enough, we were able to move on and start the actual chemotherapy treatment with rituximab. As this first drug began, I looked out the window and I reminded myself that I was merely inches from the finish line. As the hours ticked away and I went through one drug after another, my spirits slowly improved. A sense of relief washed over me as the nurse hooked up the last drug. I now had just one hour left until I was finished with all six chemotherapy treatments. And then I could start the clock on my final chemotherapy cycle. Looking out those large windows and all around at the city, I really started to take in the moment. Focusing my eyes on the horizon line, I thought about my own personal finish line. I could feel a sweet sense of new beginnings and of hope. It was almost as if it was too good to be true that I had made it all the way to the end of my treatment. As that wonderful classical music reached my ears, it was incredibly satisfying to reflect upon all the trials and tribulations of the prior chemotherapy cycles. An hour or so later, the nurse came by to disconnect me from the machine, and it felt like someone had just opened the door to my jail cell. A great sense of freedom and satisfaction washed over me. I was incredibly proud and I felt strength from having survived all six treatments. The nursing staff even set up a brief celebration, handing me a a bottle of apple cider as well as some cake. After eating the cake, we asked the staff to take a picture and they obliged. With a massive smile on my face, I beckoned over the three women who had been critical in making sure I had all the best care available and had helped to comprise my amazing support network. My mother, my wife, and my sister all stood there with me as I sat in that chair for the last time, beaming from ear to ear. After packing up my belongings and saying farewell, we took part in one final tradition. Upon completing their last chemotherapy session, all patients ring a ceremonial bell and the celebratory sound echoes out for all to hear. With my head held high, I rang that bell as loudly as I could and took one final look around the room before walking out the door and hoping to never return. Quote, chemo is done. I plan to go home and get as stoned as possible, as quickly as possible, and to watch me some Judge Judy. March 19th, 2018 at Big Chuds. And there we are. So that's the uh, Finish Strong chapter. Next chapter is how I survived chemotherapy. It's a little bit of a pause in the story, and I'll kind of went over some stuff that worked for me, and hopefully it can help you. Um, this is my battles with cancer, a candid patient and caregiver's memoir. I was a cancer patient, I'm a survivor, and I was a caregiver for my mother. Um, it's available on Amazon. This is the free version. I'm doing the whole book for free on YouTube. I want anybody who wants it to be able to get it. I've also published Trading Wisdom and 
trading quotes. And of course, I'm Big Cheds on Twitter, Cheds Trading on YouTube. Um, folks, I'll be back with a, a new chapter soon, and I'll talk to you then.